Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's good to see you in my mind's eye. It's been a while. I've been on a crazy journey. Um, my faith was almost completely shipwrecked, but I'm back and stronger than I ever was before. And I learned some valuable lessons. I have a testimony to share in a different video and some miraculous events to tell you all about. But the spirit wants me to tell you this today and that it's very, very important. And it's been laid on my heart to say it for a good while, probably since last spring. So I asked our Heavenly Father by means of the spirit while feeling it so strong today, what did he want me to do? And um, this is what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about the topic of, is the Bible a, the foundation of our faith and our hope? Is it even necessary? Or is it perhaps something we can push aside and, and really isn't as valuable as some of us think? Is it that it's more about the Holy Spirit and God working through us and talking to us and guiding us and us being willing to submit to that spirit. We're going to get to the bottom of this to um, pull down every stronghold and um, set matters straight. So I invite you to follow along in your Bible, but I'm just going to go with the flow of the Holy Spirit. So you can always pause it to look, look it up, the scriptures. Or you can watch through the first time and do another run through it and look up the scriptures to see if these things really are so. So let's get to the bottom of it. Our opening scripture is 2 Timothy 3 verse 16. And what do you notice there? You notice it saying, All scripture, all all scripture, all, it's backwards probably, all scripture, circle it, all scripture is inspired of God and profitable for training in righteousness so that the man, woman of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work man or woman woman was taken out of man woman all scripture is inspired of god and profitable for training in righteousness <clears throat> excuse me so that the man and woman of god may be adequate equipped for every good work the new world translation of jehovah's witnesses says completely equipped for every good work well um the silver sword bible was the last one i used with them and it said it said it not i don't know what they're using right now that doesn't matter pressing forward we want to look at the things that matter and plow forward and forget the things behind the things that are futile and nonsense so if all scripture is inspired of god but i thought we thought you might have thought that the foundation of our faith is Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. And we, the stones, are built upon that rock mass. And you'd be correct. But he is called the Word. What is the Word? Well, we know we call the Bible the Word, the Word of God. So the Bible is the word. It is Christ's and God's thoughts. So my notes now say we're going to look up Deuteronomy chapter 6 and read verse 1 to 9. And it says, Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances with uh, ordinances which the Lord your God commanded me to teach you that you may do them in the land to which you are going over to possess it. 
that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, or O spiritual Israel now, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord, the God of your fathers has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise and you shall bind them as a sign spiritually upon your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes spiritually it's written on our heart our mind in front of our eyes our hand as the better mark than the beast mark um, so if, how much scripture is important? What does second Timothy, second Timothy three sixteen say? All scripture is inspired of God. Even the old Testament is very important for us today. We learn many lessons that help us to understand the spiritual walk we now are going through. So are there commandments or are we freed from the laws? We'll get to that soon. So we're to think of them every day as we get up, as we lie down, as we sit. We're to meditate on them and teach them to our children, wherever we are, whatever we're doing. I mean, right now, it makes me think of um, to do all things for God's glory, says the Bible. And if you know where that scripture is, maybe you could put it in the comments. So Matthew 24, 14 says... And this good news, or gospel, which means good news, of the kingdom will be preached through all the world for a witness to all people, and then the end will come. Well, this good news, where do you find it? Jesus is the cornerstone, the capstone, the foundation, the solid rock mass, in which his, he is the word. Where are his words? In the Bible. How do we know the good news? We must read the gospel accounts, especially of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and the apostles. But all scripture is inspired of God and beneficial. So that's where we learn about what the good news is that we are supposed to preach. Joshua 1 verse 8 says, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Does this apply anymore? Well, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is inspired of God and beneficial. So we do well to meditate on the Bible and on the gospel accounts and to be careful to do what's written in it. So what law are we under now? Well, sure, we're not under the Mosaic law, but it still has lots to learn from that we still are under these commandments of certain commandments and princip principles and wisdom taken from why all that happened up until our day. And we'll get to that. Acts 17, 11 says, now these Jews, and now we're spiritual, spiritual Jews, were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. What did they do? They examined the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Keep that in mind. Second Timothy, and we should be doing that too. 2 Timothy 1, 13. 
follow the pattern of sound words that you have heard from me in faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Follow the pattern of sound words that you have heard from me. So I think this is Timothy, Second Timothy, so he must have wrote it. Follow the pattern of sound words that you have heard from me in faith and love that are in Christ. His words were not his own. They were words from Christ, the word of God. Where do we find it? In scripture, right? All scripture is inspired of God. So how do you know these words unless you read them from the Bible? Jesus' words. 1 Peter 2.21 To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example, a role model, that you should follow his steps or step. Some translations say a role model or an example. To this you were called. You were called because Christ suffered for you and he left you an example that you should follow his steps. But how do you know what steps to follow unless you go and read all scripture that's inspired of God and beneficial for teaching, for reproving, for setting things straight? Hebrews 13 verse 7 says, Remember those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you, and considering the result of their conduct, imitate their faith. Now, these ones mostly were the ones who are in the word of God, the Bible. So that would be Jesus and all the faithful ones of old, and all the faithful ones in the Bible, including we can look at the conduct of definitely faithful ones even now, okay? and follow their faith and conduct. But the main point is Hebrews 13, seven says the word of God. Okay, remember those who spoke the word of God. And we find that in the Bible. The Living Bible, uh, read, okay, that's my note. So I'm gonna read from the Living Bible, 1 Corinthians 10, one to 11. And the bottom side note for verse 4, it says, For we must never forget, dear brothers, what happened to our people in the wilderness long ago. God guided them by sending a cloud that moved along ahead of them. And he brought them all safely through the waters of the Red Sea. This might be called their baptism, baptized both in sea and cloud, as followers of Moses, their commitment to him as their leader. And by a miracle, God sent them food to eat, and water to drink. There in the desert they drank the water that Christ gave, gave them. He was there with them as a mighty rock of spiritual refreshment. And a side note says, and by the miracle implied literally all ate the same supernatural food and drink. They drank the water that Christ gave them literally, for they drank of a spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. So uh, verse 3, Yet after all this, most of them did not obey God, and he destroyed them in the wilderness. From this lesson we are warned that we must not desire evil things as they did, nor worship idols as they did. The scriptures tell us the people sat down to eat and drink, and then got up to dance in worship of the golden calf. Another lesson for us is what happened when some of them sinned with other men's wives and 23,000 fell dead in one day. And don't try the Lord's patience, they did, and died from snake bites. And don't murmur against God and his dealings with you as some of them did, for that is why God sent his angel to destroy them. All these things happened to them as examples as object lessons to us to warn us against doing the same things they were written down so that we could read about them and learn from them in these last days as the world nears its end how would we know all these things happen 
unless they weren't written down for us in God's word and we read them. Seems like the Bible is very fundamental in our walk with Christ Jesus and God. Deuteronomy 4.2 says, Do not add to what I command you. Do not subtract from it, but keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. Does this only apply in the Old Testament? No. Are we under commandments now? Yes, we're going to get to that. All scriptures inspired of God, beneficial for teaching, for reproving, for setting matters straight, that the man or woman of God may be fully equipped for every good work. Revelation 22:18 to 19, I warn everyone who hears the words, the prophecy of this scroll, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in the scroll. And if anyone takes words away from this scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this scroll. Do you think it's okay to play around with the Bible or the scrolls? I mean, you might as well just say all the scrolls in the Bible, all the prophecies add or take away from it or diminish it? I don't think so. 1 John 5, 3 says, For this is the love of God, that we should keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. Are we under commandments? Yes, we are. For the love of God, for this is the love of God, that we should keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. Uh, okay, so now I've got a note. Explain how led by the Spirit and taught by the Holy Spirit. We know the right Spirit if we know the Bibles. That is true. So the only way to know if we're being taught by the right Spirit, because there's the false Spirit, there's the demonic spirits, and there's the real spirit, the Holy Spirit, by means of Christ Jesus and God the Father. How do we know that we're being taught by the right spirit? Well, we must know the Bible front to back, back to front, in and out, sideways, up and down, the breadth, the height, the width, in context, to have the whole picture and ask for the Holy Spirit to teach you as you read it. Not your wish, but God's will for you. So how do you know the right spirit unless you haven't read God's word? So the New Living Translation says at 1 John 4 verse 1, Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the spirit. You must test them to see if the spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. We must be careful. It says these come from people. So how do we know this? Um, it's going to get into that. Timothy, uh, 1 Timothy 4.1 says, Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times or last days, some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings of demons. Verse 2 says, these teachings come through hypocritical liars. So they come through people. They're channeled through people because demons inhabit and work through people to trip you up. They have a form of godly devotion that proves false to its power. And from these turn away, says the Bible in 2 Timothy 3. And um, hypocritical liars. Oh, I had another thought. Um... Yeah, basically the Bible says to stay away from these types of people. I had another scripture that came to mind. It went, but we will move forward. If the Spirit wants me to remember it, it'll come back to me. So it says that they speak. The Bible says that they speak their own wish to have their ears and your ears tickled. People want to hear what they want to hear. They don't want to hear what they don't want to hear because they are stubborn, selfish, prideful, all about self, and enjoying this demonic world rather than being lovers of God and wanting his kingdom 
to enjoy the blessings of his kingdom. Where do we find this scripture? 2 Timothy 4, verse 1 to 4 says, I charge you, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, preach the word. I charge you, you are commissioned to do this. Let's do it again. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound doctrine. And we're already here with that Bible prophecy. But having itchy ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to truth and wander into myths. Everyone is accumulating teachers for themselves that are not teaching truth, wanting to have their own wish, twisting Bible scriptures, picking and pulling from it what they want. Religion is especially terrible for doing this, but we can also do it to feed our own flesh, ego, because we're asking amiss to God. We're asking for our own desires and lusts and pleasures of life. Lusting can be after anything. It's not just sexual. It's whatever you want, but everything on this earth is burning away and will never be again. We are to be a new creation created in Christ. So we have our eyes set on the kingdom, the things unseen, which we know stand firm because we've been proven it. Prove it to yourselves. Turn away from itchy ears that tickle you through doctrines and teachings and myths of demons, the new age, law of attraction, Gaia, um, Buddha, all the spiritualistic teachings and all the religions that have made communion with the devil and the governments of this world, the United Nations, and that includes Jehovah's Witnesses. And so, um, of which I was a part of, so if you wonder why I'm always harping on Jehovah's Witnesses, I spent a very long time, most of my life, as a Jehovah's Witness. And uh, it was good for me to be able to go through that to learn what truly is the truth that sets men free. Uh, John, you'll know the truth, John 8, 23. You'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. So um, I think I have that right. Maybe I have it wrong. Um, I'm really working on a new scripture lately. So I have that in my head. Um, end verse with uh, second to Second Peter 3, 5 to 8. I mean, end verse. Yeah, this is our ending verse. Close up everything with Second Peter 3, verse 5 to 8, modern English version blue book. Second Peter. Oh, I have a bookmark in here. Second Peter 3, 5 to 8, for they willingly ignore that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed standing out of water and in water by which the world that then existed was flooded with water and perished. But by the same word, the heavens and the earth that now exist are being reserved for fire kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. They deliberately do not look back about those things. And we must remember that the Bible says that by faith, 
that's that's another scripture I wanted to put in here and I didn't. By faith, Ab Abraham did all these things. By faith, Noah did all these things. By faith, Sarah did all these things. By faith, you know, uh, Rachel, Rahab, you name it. By faith, Ruth, Mary, by faith, all did not know where they were going, but they trusted in the Holy Spirit. They trusted in Jesus Christ, though they did not know him, that he was leading them at the time. And by faith, all did these things, says the Bible, and they got the promise. And even if they didn't get the promise yet, they will be granted it soon. So isn't that a glorious thing? So if you remember where that scripture is, which I meant to put it in here, but the video is already 25 minutes counting. Um, that's a great, a great scripture too, because how do you not know those things happened unless you read God's word? I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'll be making uh, more video content and uh, I'm going to be pretty busy. So I can't, I, I know too many people all around the world now since starting these, these YouTube videos and videos elsewhere and uh, meeting people online all over the world all these years since I left the Jehovah's Witnesses to do Christ, uh, to follow Christ Jesus, to do God's will. Um, I've been through so much. I just wasn't, I just didn't get back to anyone. I just couldn't, my plate was so overfilled, but it was uh, destined to, to happen, predestined foreordained. It was supposed to happen. And I'm going to make a video about that. So stay tuned. I'm sorry if I haven't got back to you. In time, I'll try to get back to those of you that I can. The spirit is eager and willing, says the Bible. The flesh is weak. So I'm just human. I can't do everything. I hope this encouraged you to set matters straight and uh, pray, pray about it if you're not sure. And uh, pray about it in all sincerity through the Holy Spirit, not your own wish, but what God's will is for you. And then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. In Jesus' name, I pray this for you. Amen. Be blessed. Take care.